program starts shortly. Welcome to another Quantum Conversation, brought to you by AcousticHealth.com. I'm Loren Gailey, and I invite you to sit back as we enter the quantum realm, that space of the greater part of you. It is your connection to infinite possibilities, infinite potential, and infinite mastery. We begin today's quantum conversation with a sound healing song by Z Earth Star Healer. Allow yourself to come into the heart and experience this radiation of love. Oh, 
just couldn't take it anymore, you know. Um, and one day I was sitting in the back of a taxi, and this voice in my head just said, Z, where are you from? And I was anticipating the answer China to resound back into my mind, but the first word that came back was Andromeda. And I was very surprised because at the time I didn't even know uh, that Andromeda was a place in space. And so mm. when I got home, I, I Googled beings from Andromeda. <laughs> uh, and of course, I came across all of the starseed material on the Internet. And this is one of the pros of being a millennial starseed is that I didn't have to go through 30 years of, you know, talking to aliens and having to hide it from everyone. Um, so... Um, Soon after that, I began to go into these altered states of consciousness uh, where I felt like I could see these lines of light in space um, with technicolors and sometimes feeling like there were more space behind space. Um, and at certain points, I started communicating uh, through feeling. It wasn't um, like words and it wasn't language. It was just the feeling that there were other beings that were here with me and there was at this great love between us, this love and support and understanding, and it made more sense, that feeling, than, you know, the rest of my life on Earth had made sense. <laughs> so, um, throughout that first couple years of um, the initial integration of these higher dimensional sensations um, and perceptions, um, I was informed that it would take about six to seven years for this integration to take place. And they informed me that what was happening was sort of like a braided walking process. And it wasn't so much that there was a different soul walking into my body. It was just that there was a higher aspect of myself that was dormant. And this is the process that so many star seeds and light workers are, and actually pretty much everyone that's awakening is undergoing. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I asked, you know, what is this Andromedan aspect, um, I had these dreams for a couple months, I think in uh, the spring of 2014, where I was going up into these ships and going into these uh, future tunnels, and I was in a lab, but it was, like, not a physical realm. It was more of, like, a light density, and I was shared that it was the sixth, seventh dimension. Um, and I was definitely in still what felt like a lab, but it was like a... You know, as in, you would imagine a science lab in a university on Earth. And I was a geneticist, but I was learning to create and manipulate um, and enhance DNA, um, genetic material, or biophotons, um, in the sixth, seventh dimension. I was training to be on Earth in the Star City mission. And so, of course, at the time, this was so out there and... Um, I couldn't hardly grasp, you know, what that can mean. But over the years, it started, um, this little uh, piece of information from the stream started percolating through my being. In that, you know, when I went um, into the world, oftentimes my guides would be very present with me, the higher aspects of self. They would suggest that I go into places like the shopping mall or the subway where there's a lot of people, um, and I was instructed to just watch through the lens of my higher perceptions, higher dimensional perceptions, through uh, these ge geometries of light that I was perceiving, um, and to just watch uh, what was happening in the energies of the people inside the mall or inside the subway train, and I would do this for hours on end. Um, and this was kind of the beginning of the training of uh, moving into this work that I do now, which we're calling advanced light work or advanced psychic light work. Um, and we're making a distinction here with the advanced, not because, you know, it's so great, but really just in previous times, um, light work had this connotation that we're going out there and spreading love and light. And this is fantastic. And this is the mode or the state of being that we should always be in. However, there's such a finesse and more precise way that we can do this work, and this was discovered through um, these years of exploration as I was sitting in the mall, watching the energy systems of the people, and receiving, um, you know, the distortions and, and where the energy field was disconnected from source and from the earth. Um, and it became evident that 
uh, my presence on the earth was in service to this quote-unquote mission or prerogative of reconnecting all aspects of the reality back to source. And then it was shared with me that this consciousness streams from source and that these songs that come through through this body um, are codes from source, which it's like when the intention uh, hits the vocal cord and oscillates the vocal cord and sound comes out of our mouth or our throat chakra, the intention encodes the sound and it comes out in the waves. So the even as the words um, that we are sharing or the songs, they're encoded with these codes that reconnect and reactivate the original template of our human divine DNA that has degraded over this period of time as humanity fell in vibration or in state of consciousness. Um, and so we want to uh, kind of evolve our presence on the earth by um, saying that in the past we've had channels where we're channeling higher dimensional beings because the earth wasn't at a high enough frequency to sustain these consciousness in the body all the time. And what we're experiencing now is a forward evolution from channeling of actually embodying these frequencies all the time. Um, and this is what we're talking about here. It's quite a fascinating and fun and joyful pro process because we're reclaiming this um, brilliant and perfect technology of consciousness and bodies um, that is our source uh, inheritance. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, about, let's say, two years ago, um, after this sort of uh, ongoing training, I started going on these random good work missions, what I call them, and I would just get this inclination to go to a place or something. You know, I'm sure many of us experience this. You have no idea why you're drawn to a place. And sometimes there's even a really specific way you have to get there. Um, and I would get to the place I'm supposed to get to, and something extraordinary would happen. So, for example, and this leads into the present moment of where my body is at now, um, last winter, um, actually the day after our first quantum conversation, because, uh, Loren totally catapulted me into this new mm -hmm. quantum timeline, um, uh, I had heard the call to move to Vermont. And at the time I was working my last quote unquote muggle job, uh, which wasn't really muggle at all, because, um, the surface I was working at this um, recovery center, alternative re recovery center as a chef, um, it was really a test. And I'm going to just add in this little snippet for anyone who's really wanting to move from the false matrix reality to the Gaian organic consciousness uh, matrix of living light, which is the process that really the big process that we're talking about is so simple. If you are a human being on the planet right now, especially one who is awakening, this is the process that you're undergoing. You know, if you've been awake for a while and you're getting really tired of this quote-unquote job that you have to get to, um, this little message is for you. So um, I had already come back from, you know, a grid work mission, having access to this multidimensional reality, seeing entities and implants and all sorts of stuff. When all of a sudden I ran out of money, I was supposed to house it for someone um, in Mount Shasta for a few months in January of 2018. Um, and I knew that there was work to do there in this root chakra of the earth. So I was very surprised when that opportunity uh, fell through and I was forced to move back home with my parents. So obviously when I got there, I realized quickly that I would probably have to get a job and that it was actually in alignment for me to do that. So I found this job um, at an alternative healing center, and it was one of these, you know, pseudo-spiritual, law of attraction kind of folks, um, bless their heart. Um, but uh, when I was working there, what I realized was that I could not shut off my gifts. And this was now the reality that I'm anchoring. I made this conscious intention by showing the universe I was ready to anchor my gifts and myself. 
you know, so many times because these altered states of consciousness that are really supposed to be our natural state of consciousness seem kind of foreign and scary, subconsciously we'll start to um, do things that lower our vibration, you know, grounding food, for example, um, and the ways um, that um, some of our addictions are in place are really um, us feeling that we have nothing to hang on to as a reality is shifting so quickly around us um, and even inside of us. So when I realized that I was really ready to anchor all of these multidimensional skills and tools and sets of perception that I had, even if I had to work a 3D job, I made it very clear to the universe. I said, this is true. And so when I got to the job, I was tested, obviously, you know, um, because there was an addiction and depression um, eating disorder recovery inpatient program. There was a lot of entities and implants and programs involved. And you know, um, this was an experience where I uh, was given the opportunity to show the universe that I was ready. So I was chopping carrots and cooking food all day while these astral aspects of myself were clearing and restructuring um, and portaling out these entities as in agreement with the higher selves of the patients that were there at the retreat center. And this way of living only lasted two months before the universe responded to my very assured intention. So this led me um, to my first talk with Loren and then following my guts into moving to Vermont. Um, basically overnight, you know, spirit was like, it's time to move to Vermont. I said, I got a job. And she said, you gotta go. I said, right now? And she says, get in your car. So. <laughs> I got in my car. I had one friend in Vermont, so I, I just beelined to his house. And um, as soon as I drove into, uh, coincidentally, was also a mountain valley, I, my whole body started shivering, and I just knew that I was in a Pleiadian galactic goddess vortex. Um, now, this place wasn't, quote-unquote, super well-known in the New Age and spiritual movements like Mount Shasta or even Pizak in Peru is known. Um, but there are certainly uh, local folklore about the magic um, and the power of this place, which I had no idea about when I drove in there. Um, I just felt this great Palladian energy. And so um, I ended up moving in with that friend that was there. into this house that was in the middle of a mountain valley surrounded by these giant mountains in Vermont um, and soon after that I met this Cherokee elder who was um, raised and grown up in that area um, and Cherokee is the local indigenous peoples that live in that place and of course he tells me this great story about how the Palladians landed there um, and a way before humans were there and that's what created the mountain valley um, and wow. this is how the Cherokees were brought to Earth. And this is their creation story. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Mm. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. You totally picked up on it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, this is like the confirmation that we receive from the reality when we, you know, totally align with these hunches that we get, which to a lot of people, like my parents, would seem outrageous, you know. So, um I was there for about three months over the Earth, Sun, Pleiades, um, stellar alignment. And, you know, um, I'm just going to tell this brief story, um, you know, because uh, I feel like I'm walking on this path of being what my guides um, or my higher selves are calling a galactic shaman. But the word shaman or shamanism has so much uh, convoluted descriptions and um, lineages on the earth that is very difficult um, for us to actually step forth into owning that, um, especially on the 3D false matrix realities where there are certain things like certifications and school and things like this. And this is just not the paradigm that we have uh, chose to walk into. So as um, a way shower and trailblazer in this, uh, what we're calling galactic shamanism, um, I've had to go through these sorts of uh, backwards initiations, let's say. So instead of finding teachers who I can learn from, 
I'm actually learning that I already have everything inside of myself. And, you know, these are things that we read about in uh, spiritual literature all the time where, you know, everything you need is inside of you. You are one with the universe, all these things. But in reality, it's a little more difficult and a little more um, convoluted to deal with, right? So here's this Cherokee elder who has lived on this land, you know, for all these generations since the Palladians came here, apparently. And here comes this 24-year-old Chinese girl, right? And so for a couple of months, I, I conversed with him about, you know, being from Andromeda and he's from the Pleiades and how I've come here to work with the Pleiadian light technology. Um, and, you know, this is uh, the work that um, unfolded quite naturally on a daily basis. You know, I would wake up and I would tune in, I would do some sessions, and then I would uh, start communicating with the light technology that was already anchored into the land when the light ships landed, you know, in the stories of the Cherokees. Um, and so I would kind of tell this man about it, and he wouldn't really take me seriously, really, because, you know, in his mind, here's this 24-year-old Chinese girl uh how could she know anything about the Pleiadians, right? Yeah. Um, and so um, I think maybe on the morning or the day before the Pleiadian Earth and Sun alignment in May, he came over to my house and he knocked on my door really hastily and I opened the door and said, hey. He said, hey, the star people came to me in my dream. They're coming. we got to build a sky lodge. Uh, I said, hey, dude, you know, I've been telling you this for two months. <laughs> but sky my dad lodge. Mm-hmm. was excited. Um, and so what he meant by that, it was a sweat lodge, but done in a different way. And he was saying that we had to build this sweat lodge in a, a new way, um, in a different way, as to actually create the effect of it turning into a sky lodge that opens up our a higher sense um, capabilities um, our crown or our third eye and to actually connect in with the frequency of the Pleiadian. Um, so I said, yeah, that sounds amazing. Let's do it. So we go to this really sacred land um, and we start building this sweat lodge. And um, as we're building the sweat lodge, all of a sudden I, I kind of tune into the frequency of, uh, of uh, this familiar state now of when light work occurs right now. You know, I've been doing this work up to, up to this point for two was three years now connecting, so it, it came naturally to me by this point. And I started doing this uh, movement of weaving the lines of light from the Pleiades into the sweat lodge or the sky lodge. Um, and the elder turns to me and he says, Z, that is so disrespectful. You have to stop doing that right now. I can't even believe that you're dancing. This is such a safe, sacred thing that we're doing here. You are not allowed to bring your medicine here. I hope that you're ashamed of yourself. Um, and and that was that, you know. So I froze. I took a deep breath, <laughs> and I checked in with my heart. Um, and I checked in with the mountains, you know, and uh, the Pleiadian and the light technology that we had been anchoring all this time. And something in my heart um, just knew that this was sort of an initiation, you know, because um, on this path you really have to know that you know what you're doing. <laughs> that makes sense. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, of course, I stopped what I was doing, and we had this sweat lodge, and in my, I feel as if that I wasn't able to complete the weaving of the light, and many people in the sweat were not able to experience um, uh, the full download of what I knew that technology could do in my heart, um, the pure stream of this technology that came from the bees, um, you know. So I uh, didn't talk to this man for about two weeks. And then during that time, he had reflected on what had happened. And he ended up calling me um, and apologizing and saying, sorry, Z, I realize that you're a woman from the sky. And I realized that I really should have allowed you to continue to do the work that you were doing because it was really important for the process um, and the technology to be anchored. Um, and, of course, that was uh, the completion of that initiation. I had to hold space for myself in that two weeks, knowing that I had done the right thing. Um, and so the bigger part of what occurred um, at that uh, beautiful mountain valley was that 
I received the answers as to why I was moved away from Mount Shasta. And uh, the Pleiadians had anchored this technology when they landed there, you know, who knows how long ago, thousand years ago, because they had uh, they have access to multidimensional timeline technology. Um, and I think that is very difficult for the human mind to comprehend how timeline technology could work. But somehow they were able to uh, insert this technology all the way back in time before a lot of the false matrix was able to hook itself into um, the very makeup of reality here on Earth. So what they pretty much told me was that they had to anchor this technology and activate it in the root chakra of the planet, but mm. which is why I was originally going to be stationed in Mount Shasta. But mm -hmm. due to the amount of, you know, false light and things like this and the confusion that is there, um, the earth and the galactics and the elementals actually decided to shift the chakras of the earth over just for, uh, you know, a month or a couple of weeks during the time when that light technology is being anchored. And I said, that's just outright crazy. Um, you're going to have to give me some proof if you want me to believe that. Um, and so the next day, I received this painting in the mail. And basically, uh, you know, it's one of these galactic visionary paintings that one of my clients mailed to me. And it's literally got this volcano shooting up kind of like down Shasta, and it's got this bowl of mountains, kind of like where um, where I was in Vermont, and it's got all three of my main spirit animals, the panther, the macaw, and the hummingbird, and it's got this woman over the mountain with lines shooting, lines of rainbow-colored void light coming out of her forehead um, and her fingers, which is exactly how I do light work. You know, people who have seen me do energy work, they'll see that I weave these lines and codes with my fingers. Um, and so that was kind of the, enough for me to say, okay, this is real. This is happening. Um, and so another layer of what was happening then, and I'm, I'm painting a picture of how um, living a multidimensional life looks like because there's so many aspects and layers of this um, that I think many people that I'm sharing with right now are actually walking into, um, you know, as we uh, clear and uh, align with our multidimensional self, this sort of quote unquote lifestyle or service um, or way of being is inevitable. So um, it was March and um, I, uh, for a long time, deeply knew that I'm holding space for the children um, and all of the satanic abuse that has occurred on earth. Um, and I think the morning that I started receiving my song, I actually had a dream that I was in this dungeon where satanic ritual abuse had occurred and that these songs really um, go into the crevice and those dank geometries and work to even clear and realign and heal those ones um, and that I think the more people that are aware of the different frequencies that exist uh, in our planet and our sphere of experience um, then the more people can hold space and to create higher timelines where those energies are no longer existent on the earth and I think that um, our whole team, we're very adamant that in order to create heaven on earth, we can't skip over any steps. We have to uh, become these full-on custodians of all the dimensions of this plane and to clean everything out, clear everything that's in a degraded and disordered um, and disintegrated um, geometry out of this plane or restructure it and realign and reconnect it to source divine frequencies. And so uh, many people may know that between March and May, um, it's kind of like a feasting time for a lot of those beings who believe in those rituals. Um, I think a lot of people in the occult um, understand that uh, it's connected to astrology. Which I'm not really an expert on. All I knew was that a lot of satanic rituals were occurring between March 
and May, and that we were here to hold space for that. So on top of this light technology anchoring, um, we found ourselves, um, my roommates and I, spontaneously in ceremony three to four nights um, a week. And what this ceremony looked like was um, that, you know, we would build a fire, and then all of a sudden my higher sense perception would kind of shift my reality, and I would all of a sudden be in the reality with those children. And they would say, uh, don't forget about us. And so um, I have devoted this stream or part of myself um, in holding space for the total clearing, the total deletion of those sorts of experiences and energies on Earth. Um, And I think that a lot of people can agree with that and that there's so many technologies um, that we can use to assist in that prayer, um, in this advanced light work, where we're um, gaining a mastery over how we perceive energy and the layers of the reality, the different dimensions of light that creates this physical reality, so that we can use our infinitely sovereign creative consciousness. This is our creator consciousness to literally create at a subatomic level a new reality from the place that it has been distorted, if that makes sense. Yes. Um, so. Okay. Awesome. I love your commitment there because so many listening have that same commitment. So it's beautiful to hear how you just followed the call and you tuned in. Okay. So go ahead. This is fascinating. So absolutely. Um, so um, after that work was done in Vermont, um, uh, it was realized that I um, had to go again, and I adopted uh, four kittens while I was there, one of whom is still with me. Um, his name in is Peru. Peru. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. How did you get a cat with you into Peru? You know, the funny part is um, I uh, it wasn't really hard. You just had to get, you know, vaccines, which I really wasn't for. But, you know, I had to do what I had to do, and Juju wanted to stay with me um, because when I had four of them, I would ask, who's going to Peru with me? And Juju would literally raise his hand and meow. Oh, that is um, so cute. He was my one, and he wanted to come, and this is what we had to do. Now, I think I paid about $400 in vet papers and vaccinations and cab rides to get his papers. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so we were at the airport, and nobody asked for those papers. And so we finally get to Peru. I'm like, is somebody going to look at these papers? Will somebody look at these papers, please? And nobody did. <laughs> oh, you didn't need the papers. But, uh, Interesting. So, well, at least you did it because that would be a bummer to be there and not be able to get in because you don't have the papers. So you did the right thing anyway. Okay. Interesting. Absolutely. Very interesting. Okay. <laughs> so Jupiter came with three siblings, right? Um, and they were born on this sacred Pleiadian land vortex. And... um uh, things kind of like, you know, when you're supposed to leave a place, sometimes the energy really shifts drastically and you just know it's time to go. And nobody else was um, able to keep those kittens. So I was like, well, I've got a car. Um, I'll just put all the kittens in my car and uh, follow the will of spirit. <laughs> and everybody thought I was kind of bonkers, uh, but they all knew me enough to, to uh, know that I was going to be good and that the kittens were in good hands. And so... um I put the kittens in my car and realized I had to move to the West Coast and that it was actually really important for all the kittens to be with me. So I was going alone. Um, And this was the beginning of July, um, I think about July 4th, and my birthday is July 6th. And it was about a four-day drive across the continent. And um, I didn't waste any time. I just slept on the side of the highway. I had these cats in my car. You know, I think they were about two, no, about four months old at this point, you know, cute little button. Um, and while I was driving, I realized that they all had different connections to different star systems and that we were literally gridding the continent with the kittens, and they were working, and they were amazing. Ever since these kittens were six weeks old, they had been connecting up with the galactics and doing energy work. I'm sure everybody that has, you know, a familiar will uh, resonate with saying yeah, that. Yeah, they, they are cosmic. Those cats mm-hmm. are cosmic. Yes. yes. 
so um, on my birthday, I'm halfway across the continent. I think I was in Kansas City um, because I was actually headed down to New Mexico to my land because that's where I um, – that was the one place I could go to. Um, and then halfway through my drive, I realized that's not where I was supposed to go, and then I swerved up again and I went to Portland. But um, I was in Kansas City, and it was my birthday, July 6th. And I woke up on my birthday on the side of a highway in the middle of nowhere with these kittens in my car. And I'm like, what the heck am I doing with my life? <laughs> <laughs> and so I made it, um, I made a point to meditate on this day on my life purpose. Mm-hmm. I said, this is my birthday and I want to meditate on why I came here. Why is it that on this day that I entered this reality? Um, and I wanted Spirit to send me a very clear sign of what I'm meant to be doing. Um, and it's to be noted that, like, I, I think that there's this part, the physical part that's driving the car, and then there's these other parts that are very aware of all the energies that are going on and the route that we're taking and what energies are being shifted. And so even for this day when I was driving, it was very much about, you know, following the train um, rails, you know, where a lot of human trafficking occurs, and I realized that they occurred also in FedEx trucks because a lot of these um, are private companies that um, get around um, border checks and things like that. So it's easier to smuggle people across the border in privately owned trains and, and trucks and things like this. And so um, I was very aware of these energies in the grid and that I was following these grid lines and, and restructuring the energy in those grids. And I think it was at 3.33 p.m. On my birthday in Kansas City, after I'd prayed all day about knowing my life purpose, um, my phone starts going crazy. And it's like a $40 phone you get at Walmart that's prepaid. And I never heard this kind of like coming out of this phone. So I grab it, and the the screen is frozen. And it says Amber Alert, you know, and I couldn't get out of the screen because it was frozen. And it said there was a child that was missing. Um, and, you know, the ha- message having come at 3.33 p.m., um, it was a very uh, startling and obvious sign from the universe that these children are communicating with me. Again, they're saying, don't forget about us. We need you to hold space for us. We understand that there's really nothing that um, you can do, like, physically in your live stream in that, in the now moment. But here's what you can do. Here's all the things that you can do. Um, and so, um, flash forward to, um, the now, I arrived in Peru on 111, January 11th, and, um, uh, I found myself again in this bowl of mountains, and I realized that the bowl of mountains is really important because it's like a satellite dish, and we're literally, um, broadcasting our higher vibrational frequencies. And you might notice that when I talk about these really dark things, I'm not um, shifting into an emotional place. Yes, I have such deep uh, feelings um, in my heart, such a deep space in my heart, holding space for the clearing of the situation. Um, I feel a connection to the spirit while holding space for them. But it's the most important for us to stay in our source vibration, in our higher uh, states of consciousness and frequency. And I'll get into why this is the most important thing. Um, but again, we're coming into the time of March to April. And um, some of you may know that um, the sacral chakra of the planet is here. And on February 1st, um, our team here that's gathered, um, we made a team excursion out to Machu Picchu. And um, Machu Picchu is amazing. Um, I think there was a guy wearing a shirt that says it's the closest thing you can get to heaven without dying first or something. Um, and it's kind of true because we get there. And um, so as soon as we got there, 
there was these birds that sang these magnificent songs that I never heard on earth before. And they sounded like they came from a different dimension. And it really reminded me of you, Loren, because I remember the first time that we met in person, we went for a hike. Uh, I think one of the first things Loren said to me was, so what do you think about birds? <laughs> I say, what do you mean? Mm-hmm. And she goes, well, where do they go at night? <laughs> I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> and she says, well, they ascend. I think that they move into a different dimension. Um, and then they come back in the morning to sing songs. And I said, you know, nothing else makes more sense. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you were definitely there with me in that moment. I thought of you because these birds, you know, I couldn't see any birds around. And I could hear these super ethereal, magnificent songs. And it tuned my consciousness into this super celestial frequency where I felt that the Incans still were or or that's the level of consciousness that they, they lived in when they were there. Um, and uh, the Pleiadians came in and this is the second um, part of the t- timeline technology that we're now weaving. And the reason for this is that um, if you look at uh, the anatomy of a woman, um, the babies don't come out of the root chakra. They come out of kind of the sacral chakra, the cervix, right, out of the sexual organ. And so um, it's realized that the, the timeline technology needed to be anchored into the sacral chakra because the higher chakras uh, we are kind of holding space for. That makes sense. Um, and so when I was um, walking down the back of these uh, gorgeous mountains, the Wana Pichu, I, gosh, there's just the most beautiful mountains I have ever seen in my life. And if anyone is wanting to make a trip out there, I highly suggest going. Um, because just by being there, you really feel uh, the frequency of what heaven on earth could be like. Um, and that these senseless suffering is really outrageous because we could have such peace and such magnificence and such beauty. So um, we climbed all the way up to the top of the mountain where the space opened and the light technology began to connect in. And we had to hike all the way around the mountain to connect all of these different parts. Um, and the reason why I'm sharing with you about technology is that um, I feel that more and more people are being called to be kind of timeline keepers um, and do this sort of psychic grid work together, which is why um, I've been guided to facilitate uh, this group work over March and April, um, uh, along with acoustic help um, quantum conversations, um, is that, let's see, have you ever heard of the Mandela effect, where, you know, there's a lemon tree outside or something? And you walk by it all the time. And it blooms, you know, orange flowers, let's say. And then one day you go outside and it's actually white or it's actually a different kind of tree or it's not there at all. Um, and these are the small things that happen in our reality that, that make us raise our eyebrows and think, well, maybe when we slid into a parallel universe or another reality. Um, this was happening to me all the time in 2018 in 2017, where I would notice these small changes in my reality, and it would be very, very strange. And a part of me would also feel that I was in a totally different reality. And so my higher self asked this question, that if this is possible on a small scale, um, then what is keeping it from happening on a large scale? As in, we are consistently shifting humanity and Earth into higher and higher and higher vibrational realities um, and this is what we're doing and this is what this light technology assists us in doing because it has weaved its energetics into the earth and into the collective and is the conscious um, kind of the ascending the light tribe that is driving the shift driving the collective and humanity and the earth into uh, different realities again and again and again that are just Better, 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 more sovereign, lighter, more freedom, more love um, with each uh, breath of the shift. Beautiful. We're going to pause here and listen to another song by Z. 
This is Gaia. Aya, aye, ayo. of you in this moment. That was so beautiful. Thank you. <sighs> so, so beautiful. Your songs are so special and high vibe, and it truly is beautiful to see you using this passion, going on your journey, creating new earth, being here, and living your passion. I love it. Great I role model for so many. <laughs> Thank you so much, Loren. And you've been such a fundamental uh, gatekeeper and helper 
facilitator for that in my life, and I'm so grateful that we can do this work together. Yes, beautiful. So let's talk a little bit about this training package that you've got. It's going to be online events, and these are beautiful because they're one, two, three days in a row in a series of parts. And these actually progress, and they build upon each other. So share with us what we're going to learn and cover. Okay. So it's really juicy and multidimensional, as you might have uh, already discovered. But essentially, we're going to be doing a few things. On a personal level, I'm intending for each person to experience a release or relief or moving away from um, a lower dimensional frequency or a false matrix state of uh, living. I'm moving into a higher dimensional frequencies of existence um, from where you are, right? And so we're talking about accessing our higher dimensional self and these um, skills and tools that we have to our disposal when we perceive reality from this lens of light and geometry. And so um, this work in my personal life, um, uh, moving back again to this concept of a galactic shaman, um, is that I think all light workers and starseeds are healers to some extent, some more than others and some in different ways than others. Um, and that having this perception of the reality in, to this degree of uh, clarity, as in to see through all of the different implantations of uh, viruses and mind control that's in the false matrix, um, gives us this clarity to move forth with our mission, whatever that may be. So in the first part, um, the advanced light work part, uh, we're doing three days well, we're piercing through the false matrix. So the first day is this in-depth exploration. Um, we're talking about, you know, all the different uh, distorted frequencies. And I think through our communion, we're going to actually move through those frequencies so you can recognize them yourself. Um, so that's, you know, different layers of uh, satanic frequencies, implantation, astral and optical implantation, you know, all of these I'm, I'm not sure when I say that if people fully understand, you know, these are astral objects that get lodged into our light body that keep us in a certain vibration or keep us in a certain frequency of expression of self. So, um, you know, states of jealousy or an ownership and competition, these mm -hmm. um, expressions of self that are not of love are actually geometries that form these kind of almost like objects in the astral energetic plane that we can actually remove. Um, and, of course, these things are usually lodged into places of us that are um, uh, have been traumatized or have holes in our energy body. And so the first day, we're moving through, you know, everything that I've ever encountered in the false matrix from those years of sitting in the mall and on the subway, you know, um, reptilian and AI overlays, you name it. It's all here. Um, and, of course, every day there's going to be a collective process. So I'm sensing that it's actually going to be something like a two-, three-hour class. Um, at first we're going to be talking about, you know, the topic of the day. And the final hour we do a collective process. And this is a really beautiful and important part because this is the experiential part. Right. Um, and so um, the details of the whole entire course is going to be listed on Acoustic Health on uh, Quantum Conversations website. Um, uh, so I won't go into too many more details of the course because it will be provided. But I do want to say that in Part B, we're doing some inner work um, on these uh, maybe taboo topics but spoken in this multidimensional perspective. So we're talking about sex in the war on consciousness and the multidimensional hijacking of our sovereign creativity, because this is what it is, right? Um, and, and we're going to be talking about how this reclaiming of our energetic sovereignty, that is our sexuality, actually will greatly help the collective in creating new earth. Um, 
and we're talking about the ego and the wounded child, how, um, you know, in the paradigm that I am in, um, all parts of ourself are integral to our being. And that when we talk about ego and the, let's say, um, undesirable expressions of self that are associated with the ego mostly come from a wounded child or a wounded ancestor or something like this, right? And the beautiful thing about working uh, from this perspective is that our inner children are the ones that are the seers and the ones that have access to our superpowers because we have this innocence in our heart and this is what gifts us our superpowers and why You know, beings who are not in their love and in their innocence have to work so hard to get it. (laughs) Um, Mm -hmm. And so beings who are wanting to uh, see more or wanting to, you know, see the implants, see the energies, see the distortions in our clients' fields that are causing the suffering, um, this is really the integral part um, that's connected to it. So um, then we're moving into part C which I think is a combination of these uh, first two parts of calling it shamanic Reiki level one. So in the new earth, um, there's no really such thing as a certification. We receive our um, go-ahead from our higher self, from our reality, and from source, and from the fabric of reality. And so um, I'm just going to tell a short little story here again to illustrate this. Um, so I had a quote unquote a shaman teacher in 2007 after I had this dream in the later end of 2016 where a goddess came to me and all she said was, you're becoming a shaman. And when I woke up from this dream, um, I was in Costa Rica at the time, I walked outside um, and I was volunteering at a yoga retreat center. And I walked outside, I was still kind of sleepy, and my best friend and um, the gardener of that uh, garden was talking, and they were talking about ayahuasca or plant medicine. And so I I approached them, and uh, right at the moment I kind of entered their conversation, the gardener turned around, yes, the ayahuasca plant is growing right there. He pointed, and then he gasped, he said, oh my God, it's gone. So we ran over there and um, we saw this giant tree carrying all of this vine had fallen over during the night. Uh, right around the time, you know, you know, that I had had the dream about becoming a shaman. So um, we immediately had to harvest all the vines and he took us back to his house. And he had been studying with the indigenous shamans there for a decade. So we cooked the medicine at his place. And I slept on this bunk, you know, a second floor awning above where the medicine was cooking. And so it steamed us for three days while it was cooking. And that's what led me into my first plant medicine ceremony. Now, I had never looked for ayahuasca or plants. I didn't really even know much about it. You know, I had some friends that talked a lot about it. But I just never felt, you know, that calling or that drawing me towards it. So, of course, in... um after that first experience, um, I moved back to North America, and I found my first teacher, who was a plant medicine shaman. And again, this is one of these opposite initiations, right? Where um, I think after the the first time I went to see him was actually the morning I had that dream about singing in this dungeon where the satanic rituals had occurred. And so I was like, okay, and and this, I was put in contact with this shaman like on the same day he was having ceremony so I went it was you know close to my house I felt like I needed to go and you know what nobody else showed up for that ceremony everybody either crashed their cars or became sick or something came up and I was the only one that was there and what happened in this ceremony um I'm checking in with myself if I should go into this and I think I will um was that uh, I moved up into source in this way that I usually do, you know, without plants. And I was experiencing the moment that I was being created. And source looked down at me and, you know, she just put finishing touches on my hair and she smiled to herself and she she said, wow, what a beautiful creation. I've done a great job. 
And I looked up at her and I said, yeah, you did. I'm perfect. You did a great job. Thank you for creating me. And, uh, you know, it was this beautiful moment of uh, reciprocity and recognition of my own perfection. And then I was like, wait a minute. If this is the first thing that's happening in ceremony, then, you know, something crazy is probably about to occur. And, of course, as soon as I had that thought, my consciousness was plummeting down, down, down into the density, into the darkness, into what we will perceive as hell or suffering or the realm of constriction. And uh, I, when I finally landed in this dark room, I looked around me, and there were seven indigenous shamans in a circle of all different lineages. They were wearing these different garbs. They all had different headdresses and different kinds of shamanic instruments in their hands. And in the middle of the circle was John Podesta. Mm. And for anyone who is not aware of who John Podesta is, which I think most people who are listening to this show are, he's kind of like um, the representation or the face of the Pizza Gate um, movement. Or, you know, you think he was the assistant to Hillary Clinton. And, um, you know, he supposedly, through the leaking of these emails, are trafficking and sacrificing and doing these terrible things to children. Right. So I'm sitting in this dark room with these seven shamans of all different indigenous lineages from the earth. And here is John Podesta sitting in the circle in the middle amongst us. And he was holding a cup of ayahuasca. And in that moment, I felt myself fly into uh, the cup and he drank it. And I went into his body. And for the next three hours, um, I was experiencing his coming back to the light as he purged and cried and his inner child and this being. I was so confused and lost in the dark. I was not knowing how to make the choice to come back to love. And so this man, the shaman, became who I thought was my teacher. But every time that I would say, you know, I'm a star seed and I'm from Andromeda or my guides tell me that I'm becoming a galactic shaman, he would laugh at me and say, you're becoming what now? Because in the old paradigm, there's this sense of false humility where you are lower than spirit. You're a servant to spirit. And that if you claim to know anything, then you don't. Um, but in this new paradigm that we are walking in, it's actually really important for you to know what you know and to know that you don't know everything, but you know something and to... Um, Learn and grow and wield that power of source for the liberation of all beings. And so um, I put up with this for a long time because I didn't, I didn't realize that in myself. And finally, when I did, I decided that um, there was nothing that these um, kind of old paradigm tools uh, that I didn't already have a version of in my own arsenal of medicine in my galactic medicine cabinet, let's say. And this is true for all starseed healers. Okay. And so um, sometime, I think, in October, this beautiful woman who channels code sent me an email with um, this um, code that she called the galactic shamanism activation or initiation. And it was this beautiful uh, pattern, geometry, that I was meant to tattoo onto my body for it to activate my energy body in some way. And then on the same day, I coincidentally went out and met this Lakota medicine woman whose medicine was hand poke tattoos. And when we met, we knew that we had to exchange medicine. And she knew that she had to put this on me. And when she did, it was this feeling that I was now to share my medicine with the world, even if the older generations and past paradigm shamans or teachers um, laugh or say that I, you know, maybe need 30 years of apprenticeship or something. So I'm sharing a story to say that um, certification is um, an idea of the, the false matrix or the old paradigm. And so we're not undergoing a process of certification in this training. But what we are doing is moving you towards the alignment where you're ready to do the work. And, you know, they say shamanism isn't really about the title. It's just about 
um, the efficacy of your work. Does it work or does it not work? So we're giving you tools and the perception to be able to do this kind of advanced energy work um, so that you feel confident that you're actually really making a huge difference in the world and in your clients' lives. Um, yes. Mm-hmm. Your stories are so wild. You, you know, you couldn't make this up and then following the path of that and just getting the guidance and all of it. It's really wonderful. I thank you so much for this. Is there anything else you wanted to add about this workshop? Um, I think the last thing I'd say about it is that, um, like I mentioned before, you know, March, April is a really intense time for the collective. And it's a really inti- intense time for the collective to choose these higher trajectories and higher timelines. And so um, in the 3D or in the personality part of the receiver or you, you are learning all of this information aligning to your higher self. But in a collective level, the energy that we co-create from these online gatherings with people all over the world also um, align and push the collective into these higher trajectories. And so, for example, in March 22nd, we have scheduled this um, sacred sexuality, sex in the world consciousness, and the collective process is going to be um, a shamanic sexual healing where we're moving out of false matrix belief systems and programming and implants surrounding sexuality and shame. And as we do it, you know, this process, those codes are getting shot out into the world, and we're actually doing collective healing. So this whole process is actually um, also always collective grid work, and we're learning about how to work in this way through the experience. And I just am so excited because the, the previous couple times we've done this, it's just been so fun. Um, I kind of woke up in um, a psychedelic music scene and you know music is a huge thing for me so I've just collected Mm -hmm. so much beautiful alternative um, music that are you know DNA activating and we're dancing we're laughing and we're learning about the most intense stuff on earth in a really light-hearted way and people have a lot of fun it's like an ascension party (laughs) yes it's like an ascension party definitely high vibe Okay. Well, those are, that's a beautiful package that's available right here on your special offer. There's a link to it. And it's acoustichealth.com forward slash special offers. I just want to give you a big heart hug and thank mm-hmm. you for this beautiful painting of a picture of what a multidimensional lifestyle looks like and how we follow that call, how we get the confirmation. And we truly trust that we are provided for. That's when we indeed are in alignment. It's so beautiful. As we say goodbye, is there anything you'd like to offer for our community? Um, I love you all so, so much. It is in my greatest joy and love to share this work with you. Um, And I'm so excited for our collective future and all the brilliance and joy that we are going to co-create together. And uh, thank you again, Loren, for having me on this show. And I'm super looking forward to seeing everyone in the training. Yes, beautiful. Okay, so if you'd like to sign up for that training with Z, Earth Star Healer, it always promises to be fantastic, enlightening, and empowering information. It is the New Earth Experience Advanced Psychic Light Work. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Z, Earth Star Healer. <laughs>
Thank you for listening to this quantum conversation and thank you for dancing with us to the cosmic heart. As we raise our own vibration, we raise the vibration of the planet. This show is dedicated to you and all awakening hearts as we are here to shine our bright light and amplify our love. Access all quantum conversations, special offers from our guests, and online healing retreats by visiting AcousticHealth.com. I'm Loren Gailey, and from my sacred heart to yours, I honor your magnificent love and light. We leave you now with music from the universe. Music literally created by the universe as musical notes were assigned to mathematical equations. The result is this beautiful music available at AcousticHealth.com. Namaste. Moderator has left the conference.